Hello everyone, and welcome to Sfar's Carrier Guide. Today's episode we're going to talk about carrier sniping, and also surviving a carrier snipe. So this is quite a fun topic, it's also quite debated. Um, but we're going to talk uh, briefly about the tactics employed to guarantee a kill of the enemy carrier. Now when it comes to carrier sniping, we typically want to be as efficient as possible and we want to guarantee killing the carrier because it's no point wounding the carrier because it doesn't matter if he's on 1 HP or 99% HP, it's kill or not kill because he still remains to function, it's just as combat as effective. Unlike other ships such as destroyers, if you wound their health they have to play more conservative, a carrier can just continue to function. So uh, killing the carrier off in one strike is the most efficient way of doing it. Unless, of course, we talk about defensive fire. So, in this episode with Carrier, we're going to talk about how to defend yourself, how to survive against the Carrier Snipe coming at you, especially in the tier, uh, up to the tier 7 bracket, and then also how to defend yourself in the uh, 8, 9, 10 brackets. And we're also going to talk about how you, the player, can get a Carrier Snipe. Now, Carrier Sniping is not something that you can force every game. Usually, what you'll find is that an opportunity presents itself and you go, ah, this is a good situation where I could potentially carrier snipe. Uh, in terms of 8, 9, 10 games, carrier sniping is exceptionally rare, but the opportunity does arise and I do have a clip of that to show you. So, first things first, let's go into our tactics training room and have a little bit of a classroom conversation. So here we are on the map north and we want to go after the enemy carrier. Now in this particular example, um, we think we're a Ryuzhou, okay? So we have one fighter, two torpedo bombers, two dive bombers. And the enemy carrier, maybe a Ryuzhou, maybe it's uh, an Independence. That's assuming, uh, you know, both tier six. Uh, we could be Hiryu's, we could have two fighters, and the, and the enemy one could be a Ranger, or it could be a Saipan. The point is, first things first, we have to know where the enemy carrier is. There needs to be a clear flight path between our ship and the enemy ship. And the important thing is, up to tier 7, there is no defensive fire for the enemy carrier. And there's no defensive fire for you either. And in this scenario, we are going to use uh, one of the advanced bombing techniques that we came across, uh, which was the in episode 6.1 which we can go back and look, and that is the defensive, so that's the uh, damage control party baiting. Un unless you are the Saipan and you get all six torpedo to connect on the um, Ranger, which has no bulge protection, it's very difficult to actually use all our bombers at once to alpha strike an enemy carrier. If you're going against the Ryuzhou, you can be quite small, the Independence can be quite small. If you use both dive bombers and both torpedo bombers at the same time, uh, and hit them, you might find that the enemy carrier survives with a little bit of health left over, you know, somewhere in between the 10 and 15% marker. So we want to make use of fires and flooding to get us that extra health. Due to the amount of time it takes to get planes up in the air to the enemy carrier, it's a lot of investment time. We don't want to send a second wave to finish them off if we don't have to, because you won't have a defensive fire, you won't have to worry about that. So, and, and then after you've actually attacked him, if he survived, well, he's now aware you're actively trying to kill me. This is bad. He might have a defensive fire ship nearby. He might get an airship. He might try and hide somewhere. He might use these fighters more in a protective fashion. So, the question we have to ask is, does he have fighter protection? Well, if so, we try and bait them away. We're trying to deal with them. But on the assumption it's just the carrier, when we're going for the carrier, step one is a dive bomber. We want the dive bomber, and we can also use it. If, if we have, if we're not an American aircraft carrying more Japanese, and we've got two torpedo or squadrons, um, we can send in a torpedo bomber as well. The reason we want to use the first fire is we want to burn the carrier. We want to burn the carrier to prevent his planes from taking off. If the carrier has emergency takeoff, well, that's fine because his planes will take twice as long to get ready and take off and we don't care about that. If he doesn't have emergency takeoff, as most carriers don't, and you probably shouldn't take that skill, well now you're on fire and you can't take off. At this point we can send in the torpedo bomber squadron if we want to, we can try and cause a flooding, we might can try to cause a little bit of damage, but it's not too important. We don't want to use both dive bombers to cause fires because if he damage cons or damage control parties and repairs the fire, we want the second ready just so we can you know, reapply the fire and prevent him from taking off our landing planes. 
So in this particular instance, let's say we use a Torpedo Bomber Squadron and a Dive Bomber Squadron on the carrier. We've got a fire. Maybe we did get a flooding, maybe we didn't. The fact is the carrier is burning. If he can't afford to uh, wait out the fire and he has to damage control party, we watch our, dam our damage numbers on the top right hand of our screen. If you've got that kind of mod telling you damage that you're doing. As soon as the damage numbers stop, at that point we can send in the following wave. We dive bomb him again with fires. This guarantees he can't take off or land planes. If he takes off planes, because usually what you'll find is that he will damage control party so he can take off fighters. At that point, it's good to have your own fighter loitering next to your friendly uh, bombers just outside the enemy carrier's AA range. As soon as you see fighters taken off, sacrificially uh, tag them as best you can and immediately go in for the strike. Get a fire, get a torpedo, and 9 times out of 10 when I do this in lower tier games, this is a kill. If you can... The, the real difficulty is actually getting to the carrier, not actually killing the carrier. Getting through the enemy battle line, which can be spread out in such a way that you might not be spotted, and getting to the carrier uh, can also be tricky. A lot of carriers these days go fighter um, air superiority, so we have one or two fighters, which means you'll be at disadvantage. And in that respect, you probably don't want to go for the carrier snipe anyway, because it's too difficult to protect your bombers from his fighters coming in from multiple directions. And because you can't alpha strike the carrier down, you want to fire flood him and then have patience to wait until he damage control parties, which only last five seconds of the immunity to fire flooding, and then come in and follow up with the second wave. Well, you need that time to loiter without being harassed by his fighters, his AA elsewhere, need this kind of space to do so before you can then come in, do the second wave, and finish him off. But for the most part, tier six, tier seven carriers are very vulnerable. This is why, me personally, I take anti-aircraft spec captains along with boosting the fighters on my carriers, and you can check that in episode 3 where we talk about uh, ship setups. So that is a uh, tier up to tier 7 carrier sniping. Now it changes quite drastically when we go into the tier 9s, or sorry, the tier 8 and the tier 9s. Once we get to higher tiers, the difference is the enemy carrier now has a defensive fire. And the defensive fire doesn't necessarily do a lot of damage, but what it does do is cause the panic effect, which mitigates damage. And in this scenario, if the opportunity presents itself and you are going to want to kill him or you think you can kill him, it's going to probably take two strikes. Unless like, he, gets, he takes a, a lucky hit from one of your battleships or some long-range shot because you're spotting him, it's probably going to take two strikes. So in this instance, we're going to say we're a Taiho, so we're going to give ourselves a third torpedo bomber squadron. And the enemy carrier... Could be an Essex, could be a Taiho, one fighter, possibly two fighters. Now, usually in higher tier games, we're not actively going out to kill the carrier. We're going out to find some other target. You know, maybe there's a battleship that's kind of over here, and we think, oh yeah, maybe we can go for him, and we're kind of flying around, and the intention is to come around and attack him from behind. Something along those lines. We don't usually go for the carrier right off the bat, but we go, oh look, there's the carrier, and look, he's slightly um, vulnerable. We could possibly go for him. Well, our fighters try and protect, uh, create a protective screen. Now, we know at this point the, the carrier has a defensive fire, so we do not send in the torpedo bombers right away. Not all of them. We can send one torpedo wave in, and we can send one dive bomb wave in. What we're trying to do is to bait a damage control party and also the defensive fire. We want him to use the defensive fire so that he is vulnerable if we attack him a second time, which we'll come to in a few seconds. So the fighter dueling goes on. You do whatever it's necessary under the advanced fire tactics controls, things you can learn to keep the fighters away from the approaching bomb and strafe. We want to get a good dive bomb in. We want to cause fires. The carrier is going to be reluctant to use the defensive fire on one dive bomber. That is a good carrier player is going to be reluctant to use it against one dive bomber. He wants to save it for the main threat. So by dropping a dive bomber, we're going to cause a fire most times. If he uses a defensive fire, that is fantastic. Actually, it's the best thing that could happen. If after one dive bomber, the enemy carrier uses a defensive fire, all of our remaining bombers ignore the carrier. There's no point going after him. He's, he's already signed his own death warrant. Immediately take your bombers, go after a different target, perhaps this battleship, pull everything back, reland, reload, take off again. By the time all your bombers have taken off, your fighters are ready and whatnot, the defensive fire on the Taiho will have ended. Even if the Taiho presses the P button to turn his anti-air off and then turn it back on again to immediately restart the timer on defensive fire, which is a trick to restart the cooldown as quickly as possible, 
will still get there before the cooldown ends. So if we send all our bombers to the enemy Taiho without the defensive fire, we can now kill him quite convincingly. We would use the fires to protect against the enemy fighters, and then we would use uh, one or two torpedo bomber squadrons with one dive bomber to cause firing, cause flooding, force the damage control party, and then follow up with the follow-up waves to get more fires and more floodings, essentially killing him off, just like if he was a tier 7 or a lower carrier. Now, that's assuming if he uses the defensive fire at the beginning. Let's say he doesn't. Well, we want to force him to. So use the damage control party or the defensive fire. So we use the one dive bomber. Then we use another torpedo bomber. And the goal here with our improved signals, as we talked in episode 3, trying to boost the flood chance of our ca aircraft carrier torpedoes, is to approach the enemy carrier, get a flooding attempt, get a dive bomb attempt. If he sees one torpedo bomber squadron, he may now be more inclined to use his uh, damage control party or if he's flooding that is or he'll use the defensive fire because he sees one torpedo one squadron if he still refuses to use the damage control party and our fighters are still able to keep the enemies at bay and everything seems to be kind of okay and we've got the patience then let him burn show him that you have some additional bombers nearby he's like ah you know there's there's um he still has bombers he may be more reluctant to use the damage control party if he knows that you still have bombers nearby. If he uses the damage control party, immediately go and attack him again. If he's an idiot and he doesn't defensive control party, that's fine. You get another follow-up fire flooding. It's going to last a full 60 seconds. He's going to take a huge amount of damage. If the defensive fire is triggered when you threaten with the follow-up bombing waves, and it depends. If he uses defensive fire and he uses damage control party, then it is worth attacking with the torpedo bombers. You'll have the spread of the wave, you can judge the wave to get at least one or two torp hits, and you're looking to get a lucky flooding. You're not doing a lot of alpha strike, but you're looking to get a flooding. If the if he's damage control party. If he has only defensive fired and not damage control partied, then there's no point, you can just wait. Um, or alternatively, you can attack the battleship, or you can just send the planes home, or you can just loiter. It depends how the fighter duel is going and whether or not it's safe to keep the planes nearby. Once the tier 9 carrier has defensive fired or he's damage control partied and you've done your attempted strike you might find that the enemy carrier is on 20 percent health maybe, maybe less it's unlikely you've killed him in this one go if he was playing smart well we weren't actually going to kill the carrier in the first place but we were going to go after a battleship but we'd like oh wow we stumbled on the carrier now he's really wounded well at this point we've done our bombing run everything comes back maybe we've lost our fighters maybe there are like one or two planes left so we recall everything, and we recharge. We know the, the carrier is either dead, or he's used his defensive fire, which means he's about to be dead. You've already invested time in attacking the carrier, so it's, it's in your interest to go back and attack him in the next 240 seconds. If you don't go after him in the next 240 seconds, he's going to have another defensive fire ready, and then you're going to have to go through this whole process again, and it's unlikely that you can actually kill him. You know, he could theoretically squirm out of it and survive. So we load our bombers, we load our fighters, we go back. Uh, however, we can get an approach towards the carrier without coming into hostile AA bubbles. And now the carrier does not have a def uh, defensive fire ready. He may have more fighters ready for his own defense. That's fair enough. But we want to then, we can be wasteful with our fighters, we can tag, we can barrage, we can strafe, whatever it takes to entertain his fighters and engage him. And then we can approach the carrier from multiple directions and just hit him as hard as we can. Because so long as his health pool is around the two-thirds marker or less, and he doesn't have defensive fire, we can guarantee enough damage to just outright kill the guy. Uh, an alpha strike against an aircraft carrier that doesn't have a defensive fire... We'll probably do about 80 to 90 percent of his health. Um, if you can get like 11 or 12 torpedo hits, which is kind of tricky, but if you even if you got nine torpedo hits, it's a huge amount of damage. Now the Taiho can just survive with the bulge, or the Takuryu can just survive, or Essex or Midway can just survive with the health pools and the bulge protection. But if they're even just slightly wounded, like 75 percent health or less, you can alpha strike it, and kill it entirely. Uh, so this is the you, this is all about baiting that defensive fire and then using the window between the defensive fire recharging for you to go back and finish him off. Now, so that's attacking an enemy carrier. How do you defend yourself against uh, an enemy carrier attacking you? So, um, just before we continue, uh, there are clips uh, showcasing this me actually applying these techniques uh, in uh, random battles. They are in the um, 
alternate playlist, the Far Car Guide uh, example clips. There are also hyperlinks on the World of Warships EU forum on the aircraft carrier section uh, under one of my guide, which you can click the clips and you can see, for example, what I'm talking about and how I'm doing in live in a random battle. Now, with that said, let's say we are an aircraft carrier and the enemy carrier really wants to kill us. So maybe we're plane detected. If we're in the back line and we're plane detected, but there's like, there's no battleships, there's no enemy cruisers nearby and it's a plane detection. Huh, that's odd. It's time to pull our fighters back. Where's, where's the enemy planes? Have you seen them for a while? Is something beginning to smell suspicious? You know, because if you haven't seen the enemy planes in quite some time and you haven't seen it over the, 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 you know, the hostile lines, then you're thinking, well, this is odd. Uh, where is he? At that point, you might want to start pulling your fighters back to your carrier. So, there are some things you can do to mitigate. If, the, if you know your plane detected, you need to know which direction they're coming from. That is the most important thing first. So, you can judge by the minimap possibly where it is. If we know we have a destroyer over here, and maybe we have a cruiser slightly over here, and maybe our fighter plane is to the north of us, we can tell that there's a sight bubble all around to our east and to our north, which means he can't be coming from that direction because you know we have friendly ships there that have sight. So th these aren't the issue. He must be coming from the west. At that point, we can vector towards the west, and sure enough, now we begin to see his planes coming in to attack us. What do we do now? Well, we don't necessarily want to fight his fighters immediately. We don't want to fight them away from a carrier. We want to use our carrier's AA against enemy fighters, so we're keeping our fighters back and ready. When his bombers move in, the last thing we want to do is defensive fire. We don't want to defensive fire unless it's absolutely necessary, as we've just spoken about, because the enemy carrier can leave, go somewhere else, attack a different target, and then can come back at a later time when your defensive fire is down and can hypothetically just kill you outright. What we want to do is go full speed. Hit the carrier at full speed and sail away, away from the torpedo bombers. As a tier 8, 9, 10 carrier, and we're, we're assuming here we're in the higher tier carrier at the moment, we want to turn as hard as we can and run from the enemy uh, torpedo bombers. And even in the lower tier carriers that can be slightly more maneuverable and are slightly shorter, it's if you can afford it, run away from them. Because the enemy torpedoes have to fly and follow you, mitigating the speed difference, and stay in your AA bubble for longer. You want to use your manual fire AA control, the focusing AA ability, the control left click on the torpedo bombers at all times. If you can, you want to, just before the fighters come in, you want to strafe through the fighter into the bombers, or if you are fighter tagged, you want to fight your tag over your ship as close as possible so that if the torpedo bombers are coming into attack, you can exit strafe into the incoming bombers. You just don't want to use the defensive fires. It's, as I said, you want to survive as long as possible. You want to use as much AA, you want to strafe, you want to exit strafe, and then... Um, even if you lose plane on the exit strafe or whatnot, the fact is your AA will make up for it, but you're focusing the torpedo bombers at all times to do as much as possible. Now, don't be a fool. If, if you feel that you're going to take a lot of damage and you're not able to stop it, or perhaps your fighters are to the north and you can't prevent the damage and he's coming in for a perfect hit and you're like, ah, this could actually kill me right away, use the defensive fire. If you have to use the defensive fire, use it. You know, you don't want to turn into them. You want to turn away or you want to run in a straight line away from the bombers. If there's no other opportunity, use the defensive fire. However, if you feel that you can run away and you don't need to use the defensive fire and it can wait, because remember the defensive fire works off the medium range guns, not the long range guns, then use your long range AA with your manual AA control, wound them down as best you can. Now, if he dive bombs you and you get a fire, or if he uses torpedo bomber and he gets a flooding, look, are there other planes waiting to do a follow up? If you're flooding, you're probably gonna have the damage control party because unless, you can afford to get fighters out there and to take care of them and then you know kill off the secondary wave this is a personal experience thing uh, how you judge when to use your damage control party but you want to typically use your damage control party only when it's safe to do so when there's no other bombers or a threat 
Um, if you're taking a lot of damage, if you're low health, if you've got a couple of fires, if you're on flooding, well then you have no other option, you're going to have to damage control party and then you're going to have to rely on strafing or barrages or your AA to mitigate the incoming dive bomber. If you cannot afford to take a fire and you haven't used your damage control, uh, your defensive fire, maybe think about using it just to cause a panic on Japanese dive bombers, whatever it takes to survive in that particular instance. So that is surviving part one. The question is, is the enemy carrier going to come back and attack you again? Because th there's a few things you have to. Oh, that's weird. Uh, there's a few things that you have to do differently now once the attempted carry snipe has ended. If the enemy carry wants to come back and attack you again, did you use a defensive fire? Did you not use a defensive fire? If you didn't, then you're still in relatively good health because you can mitigate a second attack uh, quite effectively, uh, and you might still survive depending on how much health you have. If you did use your defensive fire, then as soon as all the enemy bombers are gone. Hit the P button, which is a shortcut to turn your anti-aircraft guns on. Hit it again. That turns off your active defensive fire, which lasts for two minutes, and immediately starts the 240 second uh, cooldown. So if he doesn't come back within the next 240 seconds, you could have another defensive fire ready. If he does come back within that 240 second window, then at least land your fighters, rearm them, and then stay next to your own ship. You cannot afford to go elsewhere in the map and help other people. The enemy carrier may attempt to bomb or go after targets. If you see his bombers going after other targets at that point, you can consider moving your fighters away, but you need to be smart about your carrier. Perhaps use your dive bombers as long range scouts. Try and spot where his bombers are. If you know you've got ships in the east and the north, Think about where he might come from in terms of spotting or approach to you. You need to know in advance, who is he going for? Is he going for me? Because you are wounded, you are vulnerable to a second strike that could kill you off. You're tanking here effectively, preventing other ships from taking damage. He's not bombing anyone else, he's bombing exclusively you. And so long as your team performs, or you are able to use your bombers to sink off enemy ships, so rather than going for the carrier snipe yourself, you're going after perhaps the enemy uh, battleship or, or that type of sense, that's fine. You know, that you are wounding his fleet, he is attempting to kill you, it's not working, it's working all in your favour, more or less, you just need to be smart. If the enemy carrier decides to come back from you and you see it with the plane scouting, you need to think, can I get to another ship that's got defensive fire? Is anyone got friendly AA? Can I call for assistance? Or am I on my own? If I'm on my own, you want to get closer to the border because it makes it harder for him to bomb you. It's a dirty tactic, but you're making use of the game mechanics. If you're desperate and it's a competitive game or ranked, then... As much as I hate that technique, you could use that. It's also very effective at tier 4 or 5s. You have your defensive fire ready, maybe, maybe not. You have your fighters, keep them close. Again, we're looking to do strafes into fighters or exit strafes into bombers. Now that is kind of higher tier, and it's also valid in lower tier, in that you want to run from torpedo bombers if possible. You want to focus fire the torpedo bombers with your AA also as the top priority. You want to strafe if you've got fighters and barrage into an exit barrage if possible. Now there are some other instances where if this was a tier 7 game, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about ranked here. Uh, it's a little kind of bonus extra topic. Let's clear the page. Let's say we are in a ranked game, last ranked season, and the enemy carrier is a Saipan. And you are in your aircraft carrier, which is a hear you. Okay, so this is a little bonus topic for car sniping because it's actually happened in ranked games quite a few times. A lot of players in the ranked season played their Saipan with fighter setup. Okay, so they went three fighters, one dive bomber. That person is not a threat. You can either choose to try and snipe him or you can just go after his enemy fleet. This is depending on how he plays. However, the good Saipan players, at least good in my opinion, would go double torpedo bombers. And me, uh, to be successful, I felt it was more beneficial for me to use uh, double torpedo bombers and double dive bombers. That's just my setup. I would go 2-2-2 on my hear you. Now, the enemy fleets and your fleet are relatively high AA. And we and ours, our aircraft carriers, don't necessarily want to get close to the islands. We don't necessarily want to get close to uh, our fleet because anything will shoot at us if it gets spotted. That's the top prior target, kill the enemy aircraft carrier. The Saipan has the advantage that he's fast and he can come attack you. So the advantage, however, that the you has, the you can kill the Saipan in one bombing attack. 
so we can use our four dive bombers to cause fire flooding and then follow up fire flooding after the damage control party. There's no defensive fire, there's no manual fire AA control because the Siphon doesn't have long range AA guns, so he is vulnerable to us killing him off in one bombing uh, wave, as it were, one bombing kind of strike. The Saipan, however, cannot do that. His tor two torpedo bombers, even if all six of them hit, you are crippled down to like 5-10% health, but you are alive. That's the important thing. It takes two waves. So in this particular instance, the reason I raised this topic is there was a game I was playing where I was loitering around, I had my fighters kind of on the front line, I was looking to attack maybe some destroyers, and then all of a sudden, in came two torpedo bombers from the flank and was on me from behind. I'm like, oh, nuts. And although I was racing back to get back to my carrier, I couldn't get there in time. I didn't have enemy fighters to deal with. The fact is he was on me. He got a drop in on me while I was focusing on killing off an enemy destroyer. So my focus at the time was on microing a, a bombing attack on his, one of his destroyers. And he had managed to sneak in two torpedo bombers and attack me. At this point, I am critically wounded. I'm like down to 10, 15%. Now, he is now re uh, flying his torpedo bombers back and he's reloading and he's still got his fighters in the air and it, our fighters didn't actually engage. And my bombers have attacked the destroyer, may or may have killed them. That's not the main important thing. And now my bombers are coming back. This is now a very critical juncture. Unlike the, the higher tier games, I cannot now afford to ignore the Saipan. My team is reliant on me to give them sight and to prevent being bombed. If the Saipan goes for me again, I will die. And you only have to do like one or two plane connections to, for me to die. And I probably can't stop that because his fighters are going to entertain my fighters long enough, even if we clip on a brash, that his bombers, when they're ready, are going to come back and kill me. This is now a race. We need to race to kill each other. It's extremely important. I need to sail at maximum speed to keep my distance. I need to ready all four bombers. And then I need to find the enemy carrier. Which direction did these torpedoes go back? Which direction did they go? Can I can I follow his bombers back so that I can find him? Fun note, by the way, if you don't want to show yourself where you're coming, if you're if you are here and your bombers and no one knows where you are, but your bombers are flying back towards you, tell them to go that way and then shift click that way, and that way everyone thinks your ship's over here. Anyway, that's a minor tidbit. All the bombers back. Most people don't do that. They'll go straight back to himself. He's going to start reading. Well, if that's the case, get your bombers and start going. And in this particular game, in a rank season, our bombers actually pass each other. His are coming for me, mine are going for him. And our fighters are doing this weird frantic, do I protect myself? Do I go for his bombers? Or do I go for enemy bombers? Now, in this instance, um, he brings his fighters back to try and protect himself. We've, we've had this duel, our planes are wounded and weak, the enemy bombers are coming in, I'm trying to harass them with my one fighter that I've got, my other fighter I'm doing kind of an escort, it's very messy, there's a lot of micro going in, his bombers are coming towards me, but the crucial thing is, my bombers are at him first. So, as soon as that comes in, I split them off, keep one way of uh, group pairing away, and they're immediately going for the attack with the second one. I tag him with the one fighter that I've got, he brings his second fighter to go in to protect himself, that means his two torpedo bombers are basically fighting right now, and I can try and kind of engage them, my AA is going to tag them, my fighter is going to tag the other one to slow it down, because there's a lot of micro going on, the one torpedo goes in, the one dive bomber goes in, we get a hit, we get a fire, we get a flooding, the side pan is burning, and... He's on fire, maybe one plane wave is dead, and he damaged control parties. At that point, we send in the second wave as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, the fighters ended, his fighters maybe have a little bit of fuel left. We go in for an emergency dive bomb as quickly as we possibly can. We go in for a torpedo bomb, and just before he hits me, I'm able to kill him off. Now, that is a more desperate maneuver than what we've just done here. But I'm trying to show the importance of, normally, you don't always go for the car snipe. Right, The opportunity might not present itself, it might be tricky to do. However, your hand can be forced. If the carrier has gone for you, and he will kill you again, and then you have the capability to kill him instead, at that point you have to think, right, well now, I have to kill the enemy carrier, this is incredibly important. And this, and this is where, in ranked seasons especially, and also somewhat in competitive, while it's a 7 versus 7, or 9 versus 9, depending on the game mode, a uh, specialized competitive battle, or ranked battle, the Kyre, it's a one-on-one -on -one duel. It's it's like a, I wouldn't call it a gentleman's fight, but it's like, 
it is straight up your skill versus his skill. Nowhere else in the game do you have this one versus one mechanic that has such an, uh, um, an influence on the game. Uh, so, this was just one example I want to talk about. Uh, this is going to go on a little bit more than I expected, but this is uh, Kara sniping, how to snipe, uh, the general basics, how to survive a snipe. Um, I'm going to end the video now. However, I do highly encourage you to go to my other playlist, which is uh, the Far Kara Guide uh, example clips, of which um, anything listed 6.6 .6, uh, is uh, carrier sniping or a carrier uh, basically defending yourself from being sniped and to watch some examples where I've actually used what we've talked about today in the training room and random battles. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Our next episode uh, will be 6.7. We'll be dealing with air superiority. Uh, episode 6.8 will be uh, how to deal with being bottom tier. And then episode 6.9 will be uh, what to do when everything goes bad really fast. <laughs> and then the final episode, because we're nearly at the end of our series now, is the difference between random ranked and competitive gameplay, which we've kind of covered it ever so slightly in this video right now. Okay, that's all. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.